What's up folks? Today, this rabbit is going to show you how to mix metal guitars quickly for a demo or release. Alright, so here we are in Ableton. I want to start by saying a few things. Firstly, the techniques we're about to apply can be done in pretty much any digital audio workstation. Second, you can only polish a turd to a certain degree of shininess it's better to start with a good tone that you like. And the third thing I want to say applies directly to that. Good tone. A common mistake among guitarists is that they expect the tone from their amp or plug-in to be the same when it's in the mix, and that's just not the case. More commonly than not, the tone you've built has too much treble and not enough mids and ends up being thin and piercing in your mix. And as I said, you can only polish a turd to a certain degree of shininess. A good recording tone is something that takes most people many attempts to dial in, so don't feel alone there. The last thing I want to say is that, in most cases, your guitars are only going to sound as good as your bass does. You'd be surprised how much the bass is responsible for bringing the guitars to life in a mix. So, I recommend starting with a consistent, volumed, clean, and big bass tone that sounds decent. Okay, so here I've got two guitar tracks, panned entirely left and right, meaning that one is entirely in the right speaker and the other is in the left speaker. This creates spatial value to your mix, meaning there is more room to work with in the stereo field from left to right, and it really allows the guitars to be felt through the speakers. I have these tracks ready to be listened to with the other instruments. Another common mistake here is changing your guitar tracks with compression or EQ while soloing the track and listening to it by itself. You need to know how it works with the other instruments. If you don't have access to other instruments, then this video will still help you learn how to mix guitar, but you'll also have the bonus of being prepared for full band mixes. Of course, mixing the guitars is best done when the volumes of your other instruments are decent, so keep that in mind. Okay, so here we go. Right now, there are no effects on these guitars. Let's give them a listen. Sweet. Sounds decent. Now, I almost always use the same effects parameters for both guitars, so I like to group the tracks so that I don't have to have, you know, copy and paste them later. However, this isn't a big deal if you don't know how to group. As I copied and pasted, the parameters that I put on one guitar to the other for years without issues. So the first thing that I do, and pretty much any recording engineer does, is apply a high pass filter to the guitars. This allows the highs to pass while blocking some of the low frequencies. This type of EQ or filter is actually used on almost every instrument you hear in almost every genre of song, so it's nice to be familiar with. For just a moment, we're going to solo the track, and after we've made adjustments we think are good, we immediately listen to it in the mix to see if it sounds good with the other instruments. Okay, so the track is soloed. Let's use this type of filter and bring it up to about 90 Hz. Really, I just listen for when the mud goes away. It's the bass frequencies that don't have anything to offer in your mix like what it sounds like when a car with a ridiculous subwoofer drives by, you know, that Once it's gone, listen to it in the mix. It helps to have the bypass button for your filter that you just applied handy so that you can hear the tracks with and without the filter that you just added. If it sounds good in the mix, then great. Now the guitars can shine through and not compete with the bass guitar and the kick drum. The second thing I do is apply several notch filters to remove unwanted competing frequencies in the guitar tracks. This is another extremely common technique. And don't be afraid by the technical you know, terminology of it, it's, it's actually fairly simple. They are used in this manner. Again, temporarily solo the track. You grab an EQ that has this type of symbol or filter. Then you raise the Q, which is the amount of hertz field that's being affected, as much as you can. Then you just raise the filter and move left to right, listening for nasty sounds. I almost always drop the piercing noise between 3.5 to 4,000 hertz, 
and the muddiness of 400 to 500. And sometimes the 125 and 150, but that depends entirely on if your guitar tracks are competing with the bass and kick drum. When you find a nasty sound, bring the filter down, reducing the gain, or essentially the output, of that frequency. Then adjust the cue very slightly, only if you need to. This is only if the frequencies right next to the one that you found are also unpleasant. Then compare it to the mix. Remember to have that bypass button handy. If you notice that it sounds better, then awesome. You're on the way to a dope mix. The last thing I do is almost the same thing we just did, but opposite. Instead of removing unwanted frequencies, we need to slightly boost the frequencies that help the guitar sit in the mix properly. That is, to be heard and felt. This works in a similar manner to reducing with a notch, but this time we're going to use a wider cue, rather than a narrow cue. And we're going to work with smaller gain adjustments, rather than big adjustments. I like to have the cue, in this case, from 1 to 1.5, one and, and I only boost, at most, 2 decibels. I personally do not solo tracks for boosting with a notch. I listen to the guitars only in the mix and see if my adjustments are helping it come to life. Usually this involves boosting slightly around 1.5 to 2k to liven the mids, of the, to the, uh, the mids of the guitar and 6k to 8k to add presence. After my adjustments are made, I use the handy bypass button and voila, I think it sounds so much better and is actually consumable quality now. Okay, I'm going to leave you with one final trick that I like, but avoid it entirely if you already have some type of EQ on your master fader or your submix already. I like to put a filter on the master and slightly boost 125 to 200 with a Q of 0.5 to 1, and also the same slight boost to 6 to 8K. This can absolutely bring a mix from the dead. It adds punch to the kick and bass and brings clarity to the high end of the mix. Awesome. Well, that's how I mix my guitars. With only a good starting tone and some smart equalization, we can get some pretty pro sounds out of our mixes. I hope that helped greatly, and if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that subscribe button and check out my other stuff. Thanks, you lovely people. Until next time, stay hoppy.